So the Chrysler Museum of Art has a very special exhibit coming, not just because of the beauty of the exhibit through photography, but who set the exhibit up and what it really means. Seth Feeman, Inter Interpretation Manager for the Chrysler Museum of Art, and sitting next to you is a guy that everybody is getting to know through the art community, and I'm going to introduce you as the Chrysler Museum of Art Trustee, Brother Rudder. How's it going? Great, Bob. Thanks. It's not 6 o'clock in the morning. No, it's not, and I'm on TV. How's <laughs> yeah, there that? There you go. <laughs> so let me start with you, Seth. Uh, this is a very special exhibit for what reason? Well, so this exhibition uh, has been a long time in the planning. It was planned by our curator of contemporary art, Amy Brandt, uh, who recently passed away. And so this is the last project that she worked on for the Chrysler, uh, and it's, uh, it's being presented in memory of her. And brother, that means a lot to you as the exhibit it, chair, it, right? It does, and, and Amy was a very close friend. And Amy had... Um, become an intellectual leader on 1980s art. Her book before this catalog was called Interplay, where she rebranded what everybody thought of late 80s art as neoconceptualism, and she was really driving the conversation. So Seng Kuang Shi, as a 1980s photographer who was somewhat underappreciated, has been brought to the light by Amy. No one better to do it, and it couldn't have been done in a more thoughtful way than this exhibition. You know, and it's a great way to celebrate because I think quite often we think, we, we take the Chrysler for granted mm -hmm. because it's our local art museum. But really it's more than just a sharing of art throughout the world, but the people that are working at the Chrysler are of that league of International League, and Amy was, was one of them. And you are too. <laughs> Thank you. Well, she did a great job with this show, and uh, one of the nice things is that she, she uh, curated uh, and it opened at the Gray Gallery at NYU. Then it's going to travel here. We'll open it uh, in August. Uh, and then it'll travel to two more locations in the U.S., Tufts and Northwestern. Uh, so it's getting a good run, uh, a lot of good reviews, uh, and, and it deserves it. W yeah. What makes it a special one for you besides the Amy connection? Well, I think this show is interesting. I'd, I'd known of Sang Kwang Shi's work for a while, but I'd only known some of his series that show him in a landscape. Uh, but he was a really fun-loving guy, and a lot of the work that we've got in the show are him exploring the New York social scene, downtown art scene in the 80s, uh, and you can really get a window onto that life. Uh, so it's it's at once a very serious show, but also a very fun show. Okay, I'm going to ask your brother a question, because right. in my house, we, we talk about the impressionist art versus the realist, and, the, and photography is, is real. What kind of interpretation can you make with some of these pictures, though? Well, you know, it's not only the art. But what he left was a great record of historic artifacts because he was, as Amy would have said, a postmodern innovator. Okay. He was practicing performance art and recording it with photography. Mm -hmm. The same way that a Stephen Colbert does now or a Sasha Baron mm -hmm. Cohen. He predated all of them and really started that genre and gave others that came along the permission to do that. So he was a real innovator in the 80s um, with that art. And the historic record he left of what was going on in art in the 80s and the Lower East Side and Soho is unparalleled. So it's a, it's a window into time and it's a window into the beginning of innovation in photography and art that, uh, that's wonderful. And the fact that it's going to three museums at educational institutions is no surprise because intellectually the catalog and the exhibition is a powerhouse. Okay, I'm going to ask you for another personal question. Right. Where were you in the 80s? <laughs> I was in New York in the 80s. Um, from oh, so it reflected your reality then, it, it, too. it completely did. I lived through a lot of this. Um, the, the Keith Haring and Jean-Michel Basquiat, David Sally, the Lower East Side burgeoning of the pop shop. Um, my wife and I were in New York at the time, and so this has a real personal resonance to us. Wow. Well, Seth, I'm going to... Should I ask you where you were in the 80s? <laughs> um, elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> so did this bring back memories? Well, it's something, you know, when I, when I first moved to New York after I graduated from college, I lived in the Lower East Side, and a lot of this is still there. A lot of that energy is still there. And at the time, it was sort of when, when retro 80 things were really cool again. So the Pyramid Club, which is one of the places where Sang went, was open at that time, and I remember going there for 80s night. But then it was sort of uh, retro. OK. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, you guys are famous for mo doing more than just exhibits. Let's talk about the hottest place to be on a Thursday. 
Or is it the coolest place to be on a Thursday? Well, it, it's going to be both hot and cool. We'll have, as, as we always do on the third Thursdays of the month, we'll have events happening at the hot shop at the, at the studio, uh, the glass studio. But we'll also in the main building be having a very large event uh, as part of the opening for this show, August 20th. Uh, it is free and open to the public thanks to sponsorship. Say from that again. Free and open to the public. Yeah, just want to uh, make sure people understand. Free that. and open to the public uh, thanks to sponsorship from Harbor and Pride uh, who are helping us put this show together, uh, put this party together. Uh, and we have some uh, fun activities planned. Todd Rosenlieb dancers will be in the house uh, dancing. There'll be uh, swank sort of New York studio setting. Uh, there's going to be a cash bar, a dessert bar. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then there's going to be an after party also at work release in the Arts District. So once you go from the Chrysler party, you go right down the street in the Arts District and the party will continue at work release. We partner with the Chrysler for this but event. I thought you guys said this was an educational experience. Well, fun can be educational. <laughs> yeah. We're going to teach how to have fun with art. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Brother, I want to talk to you about that because you mentioned work release. Right. People are saying, work release? That, that was a presidential program or something, right. wasn't it? <laughs> um, the Arts District. I've, I can't have you on the sofa without talking about the Arts District. Mm -hmm. This is something really special to you, isn't it? It is. Um, we renovated that Texaco building on the corner of Granby and Olney as a place to house not only the Rudder Family Art Foundation, but an art exhibition and event space that we called Work Release, mm -hmm. which is just a fun name that gets people's attention. And it's so that new artists can release work through that space and that we can bring contemporary art to people in a space where they feel comfortable. Not everybody is comfortable with galleries and museums, so we thought if we democratize the space, we can offer an inviting place where people can engage with art and artists in a, in, in a meaningful but fun way. Because going back to the exhibit, even if you were elementary school or law school or post-law school right. in the 80s, through the art, you can really connect, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can, kind of and, 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 and this art is a lot about connection. You will see that if anyone invented the selfie, it was Sing Kwong Shi. Really? Absolutely. Because he placed himself in a lot of these photographs um, in, in a surprise way. For instance, one of his most famous series is a Met series where he pretended to be a Chinese diplomat with credentials on his Mao jacket and went in and took pictures with all the dignitaries and the ambassadors and the museum curators. Um, but they didn't know who he was. Oh, that's a hoot. Right. So it was a little bit of prank and fun with some selfies at the same time, all the way back to the 80s. All he right. was an innovator. All right. Okay, Seth, what's coming up next then? After well, that? so after that, uh, our big fall show is uh, uh, Saints and Dragons. It'll be icons from Byzantium to Russia. So that'll be very exciting and a, a very different change of, a change of pace. Ooh, and of course, all of these are in the, uh, the exhibit space that's in the first floor. Well, this is interesting. The, the Seng Kwang Shi show is actually happening upstairs in our McKinnon Contemporary Galleries. Oh, cool. One of the things we did in the renovation was um, put in movable walls, so we're reconfiguring the space, we're making use of that and making a very active place. So if you think you've been to the Christ Museum of Art, it you're really again. having yeah. it. So come again. on over. It really draws you through. Thanks for everything that you've done to, to bring Amy's legacy alive. And brother, I'm looking forward to talking to you more about the Arts District and all the other exciting things going on in Norfolk with the Arts. Wonderful, Bob. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. When we come back, the honeybees are coming, we hope. Stay tuned.